All right, so we've started small by defining what DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is. Now we're going to go big, and we're going to talk about why this all matters within the biotechnology pathway. So biotechnology is broadly defined as the manipulation of living organisms or parts of an organism to make products more beneficial or advantageous to humans. So manipulate, if I were to manipulate something, that means that we're going to somehow change or alter something. And we're looking in biotechnology, we're looking at the genetic properties of these different um, living organisms. So, because bio means life and technology means technology. So we're engineering life is essentially what this kind of means. Biotechnology has been around for many, many years in different forms, um, including selective breeding. And selective breeding is something that a lot of people don't really recognize as a biotechnology, but I would argue that it is a biotechnology. Selective breeding, we're going to go into a little bit more on the next slide, but um, genetic engineering today now has taken the spotlight, which involves more expensive and complex lab equipment. And if we were in a classroom setting right now, we would be doing some different lab experiences in class. Um, such as extracting DNA or maybe running some polymerase chain reactions um, right here in intro to egg. So just to compare and contrast selective breeding and genetic engineering, because some of you may have heard of these terms, some of you may have not, so just make sure we're up, on, up to speed. Selective breeding is basically when we take two different organisms and we breed them together intentionally. So humans essentially changing the genetic makeup of domesticated species, and this has happened over thousands of years. Think to yourself, like, Obviously, you were born from a male and a female coming together. That is a form of selective breeding because they chose to have you. So that is selective breeding. Basically, though, with livestock or with plants, we can select for various traits that we like, and we can run genetic tests on uh, these plants and animals to figure out um, which traits are the most valuable and make them more pronounced in the population. So, for example, if we have a bull and a calf or a cow, and we want to mate them together to increase milk content, we would look at the milk content or estimated milk content of progeny of both the, the bull and the cow. And we would um, select the cow or the bull that has the highest content for milk capacity, if that's what we're looking for, or fat capacity, whatever trait we're looking for. Genetic engineering, on the other hand, is the specific isolation and movement of genes for desirable traits without the inclusion of less desirable traits. So when you selectively breed, you're getting all of the genetics when you're breeding them together. But genetic engineering, we can, speci we can specifically reach in and get one specific trait that we're looking for without having to deal with the other traits that we might not be looking for. So with genetic engineering, we can add, delete, modify, isolate various traits, creating a genetically modified organism as a result, or a GMO. And this is something that we have probably heard about in the news or just um, in the past. So I want you to reflect now in your cheat sheet about some different ways that biotechnology shapes us. So I've talked to you about what biotechnology is. You probably have thought of maybe a couple of examples of biotechnology, whether that's in the food you're eating or the clothes that you're wearing, there's biotechnology everywhere. So socially, what are some ways that our biotechnology influences the ways we interact with others? Kind of think about, um, too, some people don't necessarily know where their food comes from, and when they hear the acronym GMO, they may think that it's bad or scary, and it may not necessarily be that. So think about socially how biotechnology shapes us. Economically, how does... Um, Genetically engineering or changing the genetic properties of something to perhaps produce more using less input. Um, how does that influence the economy? And lastly, how does biotechnology influence the environment? I want you to kind of brainstorm these and I'll give you some feedback when you turn your cheat sheet in to see if you're on the right track. But I, I want to see what you know about biotechnology and GMOs through this little exercise.